Okay, so for today's lecture, we will be learning about menu and menu planning. So we have here the concepts we will be focusing on today's lecture. The first one, we have the importance of menu and menu planning. The second is the factors to consider and meal menu planning. Types of menu, contents of the menu, definitions of technical terms and menu merchandising, and lastly, we have the menu design. So I want you to listen carefully or write the details you will be needing because this will be your guide in your transformational project. Okay, let's start. Okay, first we have to know the definitions or the difference of menu, menu planning, and meal planning. Okay, for the menu, it says there that it is a list of dishes to be served in a given meal. While for the menu planning, this is the selection of a menu for an event, such as picking out the dinner for a wedding or even a meal at a birthday party. For meal planning, this is the act of advanced planning of the menu for the different situations such as for a family or um, a restaurant. So it is important to consider the dietary needs of the people one is preparing for or you have to consider your guest as a planner. Okay, moving on to the importance of menu. So we have three importance of menu. As I said a while ago, this is the list of various product offerings of a restaurant. Next one, it is a contract with the customer. Why do you think it says, why do you think it is a contract with the customer? Because it is an indication that what is described on the menu is what will be delivered. Kung ano yung nakita ng customer natin on how you describe your food on your menus, yun dapat ang i-deliver natin sa ating customers. And then lastly, it is the essential part of the marketing effort that seeks to do a certain things. So, menu should identify the name of each dish, the major ingredients, and how the dish is prepared. So, it says there that it is an essential part of the marketing. So, um... As for the marketing, it increases the average check. Second one, it boosts sales of specialty items. And the third one, it complements to the overall atmosphere of the facility. Okay, now we go to the factors to consider in meal menu planning. So we have six here. So the first factor to consider is our food budget. The second one is our facilities and equipment needed in the preparation of the food. So why do you think nauna ang food budget? So we have to know first our food budget in order for us to determine if our facility and equipment is enough in preparing um, for the dish or for the event itself. And then the third one, we have the time and energy. So for the time and energy, diba, we need time and planning events. Um, say for example, in a wedding, um, I believe that when you plan for a wedding, the least time we need, I guess it's like a year or eight months. And the next one, we have the preference of those who will be eating or your guests. And then um, the occasion itself and the purpose. And lastly, we have the cultural and religious dietary requirements. So that are the factors to consider in meal menu planning. So we have the food budget, facilities, time and energy, preference of those who will eat the food, occasion in culture and um, religious dietary requirement. Okay, so we have six for the factors. Okay, moving on to the dietary requirements. Okay, so the first one we have here is the allergies. So for the allergies, this is very common. And there are a lot of factors wherein we can get allergies from. Okay, um, we can get allergies from gluten and wheat, rye and barley, nuts, milk, fish, shellfish, egg, and also tropical fruits. Next one, we have diabetic. When we say diabetic, this is the inability of the body to control the insulin of the body. So we have two types of diabetic. Um, the first one is yung over or masyadong maraming sugar yung ating body. And then the other one is kulang naman yung ating sugar. So you have to control it. 
Next one, we have the low cholesterol. When we say low cholesterol, this is more of our diet. Ayan. The limited quantities of animal fats. Okay. Next one, we have low sodium. When we uh, say low, low sodium, this requires reduction of sodium or salt consumption. And then last one, we have the anaphylactic shock. For the anaphylactic shock, this is um, like an allergy, pero it's very severe. Wherein your lips, tongue, or throat swelling over a short period of time. Ayan, so in case this happens, um, we will be needing um, the help of our physicians. Okay, that is for the, the dietary requirement. Now we move on to the religious dietary requirement. So first one we have, what do you think is that? We have Hindus. For the Hindus, they do not eat beef and rarely pork. Some of them will not eat any meat, fish, or eggs. Um, their diets may include cheese, milk, and vegetarian dishes. That is for the Hindus. And then next one, we have the juice. For the juice naman, only clean or they call it kosher animals may be consumed. They do not eat pork and pork product, shellfish or animal fats, and gelatin unless cleaned and slaughtered according to the prescribed manner. And then last, we also have Muslims. For the Muslims, they do not eat meat, offal, or animal fat unless it is um, halal meat. So it is similar to the Jews, right? The, they slaughtered their meats according to his prescribed manner for the muslim they call that as halal so halal is a lawful or a requirement under the islamic dietary law or in yeah it's like a ritual for them that before they butcher their meats kailangan nito and then yes ang akala natin no, the muslims aren't eating pig meats pork meats pero um they're eating meats na may tatak na halal Okay, moving on to our next, which is the Sheikhs. For the Sheikhs, this is a religion developed in India. So, they do not eat beef or pork, but they may eat fish, mutton, cheese, and eggs. So, when we say mutton, it is a domestic ship. Next one, we have Rastafarians. For the Rastafarians, this is a religion developed in Jamaica. So, if you're familiar with... um. People who has a dread like and usually smoke. Yeah, I believe that's um they are Rastafarians. So they do not eat processed foods, pork or fish without fins, and do not also consume tea, coffee, or alcohol. And lastly we have the Roman Catholic. So for the Roman Catholic, um usually they are not eating meat on Ash Wednesday or Good Friday, but uh, as a counterpart for that, they may consume fish or dairy products. Okay. Next one, we go to the forms of vegetarianism. So we have four. The first one is we have the semi, the lacto ovo, vegans, and fruitarian. So what is the difference of these four vegetarianism? Okay, for the first one, the semi, they do not eat red meat, fish, and dairy products, and other animal products. For the lacto-ovo, from the root word lacto, which means milk, they do not eat meat, fish, or poultry product, but may drink milk or eat milk products and eggs. For the vegans naman, they do not eat any foods of animal origin. And then their diet is mainly consists of vegetables, vegetable oil, cereals, nuts, fruits, and seeds. And as for the fritarians, this is more restrict restricted vegetarianism. So um, excluded are all food of animals origin together with pulses and cereals. So when you say pulses, food, this, this is usually um, legumes. Okay, moving on to uh, the types of menu. So, we have five. The first one is the a la carte menu. 
For the a la carte menu means from the card or it offers choices in each course and where each item is individually priced and charged. Take note of the word individually priced and charged kasi yan ang pinaka main um, definition, definition of a la carte. And then these items are cooked to order. So unlike for the other foods that yeah, in buffet, di ba, ituturo mo na lang siya kasi luto na siya. But for the a la carte, they will cook it for you. Upon ordering, they will cook it for you. Okay, moving on, we go to the table d'hote. For the table d'hote, this is a French term for the proprietor's table. A menu offering limited choice at the fixed price for the whole meal. So, this is usually for um, a special occasion such as Christmas or Valentine's Day. Next one, we have set menu. For the set menu, menu that offers set items, one for each course, and then it is usually prearranged by the host. So, usually used for functions such as wedding and banquets. So, for the set menu, this is usually for buffet menus or for mass gatherings. Okay, moving on to the carte du jour. This is similar to a la carte menu. So, for the carte du jour, this means card for the day. It offers the choices that are available for a particular day only and refers to the chef's special dish for the day. Okay, next one, we have the cycle menus. For the cycle menu, this is usually um, a menu used in our in canteen. Okay, so a set of menus which are rotated on a set cycle usually used in institutional sectors of the industry like hospitals, prisons, employee food service operation, and school canteens. So, bakit sinabi siyang um, cycle menu? It's because um, nakaset na yung menu nila for a week. Say, for example, every Monday their menu is adobo. For Tuesday, chicken curry. So, asahan natin that for next week, every Monday, their um, menu is adobo. So, magsa-cycle-cycle lang yung menu nila. Okay, moving on. We go to the other types of menu. So, first we have this wine list, a menu for the selection of wines. Next one, we have the table tent menu, menu with particular items like special or unusual drinks for dessert of the day. And the next one, we have the blackboard menu. This is usually used in coffee shops, so menu written on a blackboard at the entrance of some restaurants. And the next one, we have children menu or kid menu kids menu so this includes children favorite food which is of child size portion requires speed of service okay types okay now we move on to the contents of menu so it is arranged here so we have here the appetizer so as an appetizer sa ating picture it's letter e for the soup, we have letter F. For the salads, we have letter A. Entree or main course, we have letter B. Desserts, we have letter C. And lastly, the beverages, we have letter D. Okay, so we'll start with the appetizer. Bakit kaya tinawag siyang appetizer? Okay, for the appetizer, this is the for first course to stimulate the appetite of the guest. So, for the appetizer, this is usually um, finger foods. Yan. Next one, we have soups. So, for the soups, that can be clear cream or hot or cold. And... And then salads, usually for the salads, so these are the green ones with different dressings. So, malalaman natin kung ano yung ibang dressings later on. And then, next one, we have entree or our main courses. So, mostly protein accompanied by vegetable and carbohydrate. So, we have our rice, our meat, and vegetable. Next one, we have our desserts. This is mostly sweets to complete the meal. 
and then the beverages. The beverages includes coffee, tea, milk, lemonade, juice, soft drinks, and other drinks. Or it may also include cocktails and wines. And so from appetizer to beverages. Okay, now we also have this special and this trend. So for this special, this is a special, a special of the day may be attached to the menu or described to the guests by the server. Okay, and for this special, maybe chef specialty, original dish, seasonal food in an ample supply. For the trends naman, this is the current trends may affect the menu and the number of customers. So for the trends, usually it's like, um, example for it, that is the ethnic cuisines like Chinese, Greek, Japanese, Thai, Indian, and the, the special and for the trends. Now we go to the parts of uh, menu. So the first one we have the cover. For the cover, yen. Yeah, Cover should complete the overall theme of the restaurant. And then, line graphic or photographs are often used to present an attract attractive first impression. The name of the restaurant is the only copy required on the cover. As for the address, phone numbers, acceptance of credit cards, and so on is best left inside or at the back cover. But usually, back cover nila nilalagay. Ayan, next one, we have the size. So, for the size, yeah, varies depending on the number of items being featured and the amount of copy used to describe them. So, ang pangit naman, if your size of your menu, ang liit, pero ang daming um, naka-featured na item, right? So, dapat ibagay natin. Next one, we have the materials. For the materials, ayan, oh wait. For the materials, we have the weight and quality of the paper on which the menu is printed as to the impact. And then, says here that heavier paper gives a feeling of quality and gives a life to the menu. And the life of the menu can be increased through the use of water-resistant or paper. Water-resistant paper or lamination. So, this is... Ayan, yung talagang ginagamit natin ngayon. So, for example, you have a menu na made out of paper. And usually, ang menu nilalapag lang natin siya sa table natin. What if accidentally nanalagyan siya ng water? Okay? Then, bad impressions of menu. So, when price change... Changes are listed by the stickers covering to the previous price. Ayan. Say for example, you as a customer. Diba? It's not right na when you check a menu and then may sticker, siya pinalitan nila ng ano. So, so ako, pag nakakita ko ng menu, ganun, siguro ito yung bestseller nila. Pinalitan yung price kasi ito yung bestseller nila. Ayan. Menus that are torn or dirty give a very poor impression on the operation. Ayan. Next one, we have the placement. So, for the placement, we have the menu sequence and focal points. For the menu sequence, we will be following with the progression of the meal. So, we will be starting with the appetizer and we'll end with the beverages. Okay, as for the focal points, so it says here, note, um, customers' eyes are naturally drawn to specific points when presented with a menu. So, here, we have here the single point sheet menu, wherein I initially focuses on the arches above the central line. So, ito ang ating focal point. For the two-fold menu naman, upper right part on the menu is the focal point. And then, for the three-fold menu, I moves from the center upper to the right upper to the left upper. Um, left bottom, right bottom, and back to the center. Kung yan, so that's how the customer read the menu for a three-fold menu. Okay. 
Next one, we'll go to the description, menu description. For the de menu description, again, menu items should be described in such a way customer can see them in their minds. It aims to excite the appetite of the customer. But for this, I believe you will be using Filipino words at that for the menu description. So, yan, gagaw ko yun how to uh, persuade your customers. And so, we have here an example. Here, this is English. So, we have gourmet slice of beef tenderloin. General slice of tenderloin. City din a butter and serve with sauce. Madiera wine, shallots, and mushrooms. So, this is just an example. Okay, next one, we have the typeface. So, if we have the cover, we have the placement. Next, we have the typeface. For the typeface, um must be a large enough and eligible enough to allow customer to read the description font size 12 or larger is recommended again font style recommended is roman modern in script so for the typeface is either uppercase or lowercase regular or italic and there should be a three point space between lines of types to ensure easier reading and then um one more to consider is the print color that is black and printed on white on white or light tinted paper such as tan cream ivory or gray uh, para mas madali siyang mabasa okay next one menu pricing yan so we will leave that one na hindi natin kailangan ng menu Okay, now we go to the definition of terms. For the definition of terms, first we have the a la carte. So, sabi natin, a la carte is a menu items that are individually priced. Yeah, that is the example of a la carte menu. And then, sabi natin dito, this is cook upon order. Next one, we have a la manure. For the a la manure, this refers to the dredge pan fried served with brown butter, lemon juice, and chopped parsley. Next one, we have sabayon. When we say sabayon, this is a dessert or a sweet sauce made with egg yolk, sugar, and wine. And then this is usually served hot or cold. Next one, we have al dente. For the al dente... This is um, how we describe um, pasta as firm and chewy. So, paano, kung paano naluto ang ating pasta. We call it al dente. Okay, next one, ala king. When we say ala king, this is a dish served with cream sauce, usually containing bell pepper. Yeah, basta may cream sauce, we call it ala king. Chicken ala king. Moving on, we go to the appetizer. Pag hinabi natin appetizer, this is a small portion of food served before meals intended to whet the appetite. Yan, pang pagkana. And the next one, we have ogretin. So for the ogretin, this is a thin surface crust covered with breadcrumbs or grated cheese and browned. Ogretin. Okay, next one, we have canapé. Canapé is sometimes called finger food. And one, one with many varieties of appetizer. This is a type of um, appetizer that is usually spread on bread, toast, or crackers. Okay, next one, we have cressy for the cressy. This is, this means served with carrots. So, lahat ng dish na may carrots or purely carrots we call it crazy okay next one we have florentine when we say ha when we say florentine this is a food served with spinach kung ang crazy served with carrots florentine is served with spinach and then next one we have forester for the forester food is served with mushroom Okay, crazy carrots, florentine spinach, forester mushrooms.
Okay, next one we have order. For the order, this is an appetizer, a light snack type of food eaten hot or cold at the beginning of a meal. Yan, order. We have hot herbs or cold herbs. Okay, next one we have minestone. For the minestone, this is thickened vegetable soup, often with lentils and beans. Next one we have roux. For the roux, this is a thickening agent of fat and flour. Thickening agent. And then next one we have vichyssoise. For the vichyssoise, this is a creamy soup with uh, pureed leeks and potatoes served chilled and garnished with chives. Vichyssoise. And then next one we have concus. For the concus, this is crumpled crushed tomato or onions. And then we have fricassee. For the fricassee, this is a pieces of meat, usually white meat, cooked in a stock and served with white sauce. Fricassee. Next one, we have morel. When we say morel, this is a variety of mushrooms with crinkled and brownish pointed cup resembling the pitted bark of a tree. Morel. And then next one, we have filet mignon. For the filet mignon, this is usually small round filet steak. Okay. Next one, we have melanis. For the melanis, yeah, a, co coat, a meat coated with flour or breadcrumbs. And then it has a pasta. Having a sauce of tomato, mushroom, and grated cheese. That is for the melanis. Okay, next one. We have risotto. For the risotto, it's a medium grain rice cooked in a stock and the other liquid is absorbed by the rice. So usually it's a rice from a rice, cooked from a rice. Okay, moving on to the salad dressing. So you will be needing this in your salad, green salad. So salad dressings, first we have... Dill dressing. So for the dill dressing, salad dressing with mayonnaise and chopped fresh dill. Yan kaya, kaya tinawag natin dill dressing. Okay, next one, we have the French dressing. For the French dressing, it is a dressing similar to mayonnaise but somewhat thinner and with distinctive taste or color. Ayan. Okay, next one, we have Italian dressing. For the Italian dressing naman, this is a dre dressing made of wine vinegar, oil, anchovies, and coarse black pepper. So, mapapansin nyo, it has a black dot. So that is the pepper, black pepper. Okay, moving on, we have the oil vinegar dressing. For the oil vinegar dressing, a salad dressing made on a temporary oil vinegar water emulsion. So, tignan nyo, as you can see in the picture, nagsisettle yung vinegar, vinegar sa baba, right? Ayan. And then, next one, we have Thousand Island Dressing. For the Thousand Island Dressing, it is a dressing of mayonnaise, pickled relish, chopped egg, chili sauce, and ketchup. Ayan. And then we also have vinaigrette. For the vinaigrette, this is a dressing made of vinegar oil and flavor. This is very common. Pinaho common sa lahat ng dressing. The Thousand Island and the vinaigrette. Okay, so that's the end of our lecture.